A lot of the people that have the money are of generations wherein it was not remotely okay or acceptable to be a member of this community. And so, unfortunately, that um, homophobia and that uh, transphobia has really persisted to the point of why fund these groups. In addition to all the good things that the that the funding helps, is the fact of how important it is to have this type of funding and to know and to know that that support is there. I quickly realized that um, there isn't much funding for the LGBT community, and um, therefore it's very important to um, promote diversity, pride within the community. Uh, I knew a lot of people who who um, donated. Uh, uh, financially as well to the organization and they all vouched for it um, for New Harvest being a really beneficial organization for the community. So it actually came up in uh, a, a search that I was doing for um, for gay lesbian foundations and I thought hey great this is right here in South Central Wisconsin. It's the only uh, grant foundation that focuses on supporting LGBT people in uh, South Central Wisconsin. The New Harvest was instrumental in helping us rent theater spaces for the youth to perform. Yes, indeed. Uh, well, we couldn't do without the grants that we've gotten, plus uh, donations from private people. Well, I was 13 at the time, um, and I saw a lovely article about the activism and artistic theatrical activism Callan was involved in. Um, and as, as a young person growing up in a queer family, as a queer person myself, as a youth, I felt like there are so few places for young people's voice. Um, and for me, I was involved in a lot of activism and I was passionate about art, but putting them together um, and creating a place where young people could speak for themselves, both in a supportive atmosphere, but also a place um, to really create transformation through art would be exciting and there was radical potential in that. Uh, we play uh, teams from all over the world. Actually, uh, just recently this past summer we participated in our first Bingham Cup, which is the um, International Gay Rugby and Board. Wisconsin Books to Prisoners started in the fall of 2006. I joined them in the spring of 2007 and we started offering gay and lesbian books as part of the choices that prisoners had. And um, then as uh, people started responding to that, I applied to, uh, to um, New Harvest Foundation for a grant to continue to develop the LGBT portion, and they gave me my first grant in uh, 2007. We publish uh general interest books, scholarly books, and uh, books about Wisconsin and the Upper Midwest. And among uh, those books, and really cutting across the scholarly, regional, and general interest are gay lesbian books, um, mostly um, life writing, memoirs, uh, uh, autobiographical fiction. Uh, we applied for the grant in, in 2009. Um, and we we gotten twenty five hundred dollars, and it was used to secure our location on Willow Island for the first annual event uh, to help kick off the Pride celebration and parade for that first year that we were became a, a organization. So in South Central Wisconsin, we provide the only opportunities for youth to get together in the form of large scale events by way of dances. For example, we have coming up our uh, annual Valentine's dance. We got a uh, $2,500 grant from New Harvest. Um, specifically, what we used the grant for was the um, volunteers that we had for the week. It was a, a national level week long tournament. So we used the New Harvest grant. Um, we different things like uh, volunteer t-shirts. Um, we got water. Um, EMT supplies, so we had uh, two field complexes and then there was an opening and closing ceremony So we had EMTs on at all of those events and purchase supplies, uh, which came in very very handy So G-Save supports GSAs, but also does um, Trainings on LGBT issues and school safety for school professionals around the state And so I'm hoping that it will continue to move in uh, statewide direction.
one of the reasons why it's very important to us to have uh, different types of events is, is that we look to present a very diverse season. Uh, and we've been uh, able to do that over the last couple of years. Uh, and bringing in events such as Kate Clinton and bringing in events uh, such as the Laramie Residency enables us to reach out to a part of the community that often uh, doesn't often isn't served, especially in a rural area like we are here uh, in Whitewater. Uh, New Harvest, I think, saw that this was an idea, saw that there was potential in us. Um, when we were still very fringe, very small, very grassroots, um, which we, we still are, but really honored, I think, the power of young people's voice. Um, honored the power of what we were seeking to do through art and activism um, and supported us from the beginning. I think it's really inspiring um, when you're an organization that's all volunteer run, that's barely making it, to have a foundation we so believe in their mission. Once we started to get more organized, we began to realize that the fees involved and the, the, um, the money required to actually play rugby at a competitive level was something we didn't really quite have yet. Um, the cost of jerseys was quite high, about um, $1,800 for a set. Um, and so uh, the book that we approached New Harvest Foundation about was this anthology, Gay American Autobiography, uh, which is 150 years of life writing um, from Whitman to Sedaris. The tournament was huge with fans from town. It was really great to see. This has helped us to uh, pro expand the programming that we provide in the terms of uh, events throughout the year. Uh, it was an expense of uh, the Laramie Residency because it was an uh, event uh, because it was the Tectonic Theater Project, which is the company you know that wrote uh, the Laramie Project as well as the epilogue ten years later and this was the first time that ever that they were touring the two titles uh, and we actually were the only venue in the state of Wisconsin uh, to have uh, the Laramie Residency in on on that tour. The first letters that we got were very suspicious about that we really existed that we would send books to LGBT prisoners nothing has ever been done for them there's nothing in the libraries for them there is nothing uh, positive about them in the prison experience at all and um, so they, they said what's the catch what's the catch and then when they found out that there wasn't a catch then they started writing us and our project has, has uh, grown rapidly over the years we probably would have been out on the street performing without New Harvest's help. Um, it allowed us to, to get a venue that had actual working equipment and um, uh, spaces for the kids to change without hanging sheets and, and curtains all over the place. Seriously, New Harvest really, really helped um, a number of times. We wanted to do a year-end performance that was larger, um, so we booked for a whole weekend. And they contributed to that and really helped that happen. And New Harvest really gave us the opportunity to have a larger platform um, yes. for young people's voices and for the work we were doing. Um, and also helped us create the ripple effect that has helped us stay around for 11 years and keep going. It's hard to distinguish it in terms of specific projects per se because a lot of our funding that we've received from the New Harvest Foundation has largely gone into expanding or supplementing current programming that we have. And from what I understand, we've received funding for the past, I want to say, five or six years. The auditorium uh, uh, seats uh, almost 1,300. Uh, and so, yeah, we served uh, over 2,500 people. When I started there, I had seven people that had identified themselves or had asked for gay material. So let's put it that way. And at the end of the first year, I had 40. At the end of the second year, I had 120. At the end of the third year, I had 320. Uh, right now, I, at the end of this last year, I passed over a thousand. Yes, we've had many uh, generous grants from the New Harmons Foundation to support work on GSAs, to support our amendment project, to uh, uh, speak out against the amendment to ban same-sex marriage before it was passed. So we're very passionate about that whole issue. Nothing can really substitute for that, for that type of one-on-one -on -one interaction or, or even team interaction that you get when, when suddenly the playing field is, is equaled and sexuality becomes sort of immaterial. Um, but at the same time, 
it's always there. It's always present. You know, we're very proud of who we are. We're People really embraced, you know, bringing a, a gay sports league to town and what it encompassed, and it was a really great thing to see. So I was very relieved when when um, New Harvest came through with their grant this last year. This is the third grant that they gave us, and um, that allowed us then to take up and start sending out our packages again. And hopefully, uh, we'll be able to continue. They were there with us every step of the way. They really helped us. Um, and to know that that we have you know, a friend in New Harvest and, um, and a, a larger sort of, you know, umbrella community organization there. Also for audience members, it can be really life changing. I know people have come up to me after a show who I don't know and they'll give me a big hug and be like, thank you, I needed that. And that's just the most, like, heartwarming feeling, knowing that you're doing something that makes people feel that way enough to say something to you. It's an edge, and it's great to have at least one foundation that uh, I believe exclusively serves the advancement of LGBT people and to you know, bring us closer to having full equality in our society. And that's when I learned that there were resources out there, such as the New Harvest Foundation, uh, and uh, the one that we work with uh, over in Illinois was the Chicago Resource Center. Uh, but what I've learned uh, in the years since is that uh, yeah, that they that they don't exist anymore because uh, for whatever reason they needed to dissolve. So it was nice to see a strong organization uh, like New Harvest uh, here uh, in the state of Wisconsin. And we hear repeatedly from the youth that come to our dances that this is the first time that they've gotten to really celebrate who they are in a... Um, what is traditionally a school context, um, and but amongst other youth like them. We're always in, in have short supply of LGBT books, and so if I can use this opportunity, if you can call your uh, own bookshelves and pass those books on to me, they'll be going to a very good cause and to people who appreciate them. Groups like Proud Theater are so needed uh, in, in so many ways. They, they not only um, build confidence in the youth that have had constantly have had society tear them down, having their leaders tell them that they're not worth anything. Um, it allows them to find within themselves that person, that heart beating, that love of themselves. But it also helps create leaders of tomorrow. It helps these people realize their strengths. And we hope that by creating these leaders that they they reach out as they get older to the youth and tell them you are loved, you are worth something, um, and don't ever, ever let anybody tell you anything different. That's why proud. We feel like there's really no goal that we can set for ourselves that we won't be able to achieve. And it's only been because of New Harvest that we've been able to do this, truly.